Jeff Jonas, Chief Scientist, IBM, Entity Analytics. Uh, so, Jeff, you may not be Mr. Data at IBM, but you're one of the Mr. Datas, right? <laughs> that uh, probably would be considered one of the Mr. Datas. So, two questions to kick this thing off. Firstly, how come you know so much about data? And secondly, what is data? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe start with what data is and then explain <laughs> okay, how you fine. What so data much is. about it. Well, the way I think about it is, um, organizations are only as smart as what they know. And what they know comes from all these different sources, structured and unstructured, and all these different systems. In fact, it's their perceptions. The smartest an organization can be is the net sum of its perceptions. So to me, that's the data. So data is intelligence? No, data, data are the observations that are available for one to piece together to make sense of. I think of data as observations. I think of an organization, I think of every system as a, as, a, uh, as a set of perceptions, a pile of observations. I think about weaving data together across the different perceptions to make sense of it. And my particular interest uh, is, and fascination is how to make sense of data as it's, as the, uh, how to make sense of an observation while it's happening, fast enough to do something about it while it's still happening. So how did you get to be Mr. Data at IBM? Well, what is your training? And what is your interest in data? Well, it probably started being bankrupt in my car at 20. <laughs> Can we start there? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> so when I was in um, uh, high school, I wrote a word processor for the pet Commodore, and my teacher ran off and sold it to the Los Angeles School District. And I got a check. And I was like, this is what I do. Why would I want to go to school? So I dropped out of school. I started a company. The company grew up to about 21 employees. Uh, bankrupted it at uh, 20 years old for six figures. I actually paid everybody back. When I even bought my company, I went back and paid everybody back with 3% compounded interest. But anyway, back when I started my SRD company from my car, I was in the business of building custom software. So I've just spent my whole life building plus or minus 100 different systems. Like, I, you know, really wide ranges of systems. I've, I kind of go project to project and become one with the data. You look more like an artist, though, than a scientist. Really? Is, is, is I prefer the, the word art, artiste. The bald head <laughs> I and prefer everything. artiste. And then, uh, well, the artiste. <laughs> is, is data art? Is there something creative about your business of interpreting data? No, I don't think of it as art. I mean, I think people can splatter data up and make it look so art. So you're the chief scientist does. rather than the chief artist. Yeah, I'd like to think that it's not art. I'm, I'm trying to create... I'm trying to, I try to envision ways to harness the data an enterprise has and do something really smart with it so you can make really good decisions. See, what you, you're in the business of helping companies make sense of the world, basically. Yeah, their world. You know, their, what, what the data that's available to them. In fact, Alameda County uh, Social Services just across the bay here. They were trying to figure out how to take a bunch of data and a bunch of piles and, and deliver more services to their to the citizens faster, and at this, usually when when a, any government entity goes to open up more services and deliver them faster, fraud usually climbs at the same time. So if you can actually make sense of your data faster, it turns out uh, you can service people faster, and they had a drop in fraud, which is kind of cool. So you're inventing solutions to large companies for data for the most part. Is yeah. that fair? Yeah, that's why I would say I'm most interested in that. I, I you know yeah. Or governments, large corporations. Yeah, anybody the though I see. The more puzzle pieces you have, the more complete of a picture you can make. So you're reinventing the world for large organizations, for companies and governments. I'd like to think I'm making them smarter. And this is in the electronic realm, of course. Yeah. yeah. It has to exist as data. Another thing about data. I mean, data, <coughs> just sorry to interrupt, yeah. but not all data is electronic, right? Well, I was just going to say, I think. First of all, if it's not observed and it's not collected electronically, it's not available to one's observational space. But I think basically all data is unstructured. Virtually, I mean, some say 80 or 90 percent. I'm like nearly every bit. Because when you uh, go to a hotel website and enter a hotel reservation, it actually starts out in your head. It's unstructured. The human's annotating it and putting it on the form. So almost all data actually starts out unstructured. And then the question is, is how do you uh, put it into the right bins to figure out what each piece is. 